So this here is a um, six liter LS engine, uh, was taken out by somebody else uh, of a 2004 uh, Chevy 2500 Express van. Um, like I said, six liter, um, supposedly only had 61,500 miles on it. Um, I am, do have a few concerns. Uh, when I pulled this motor out, uh, or when I pulled the the uh, motor out of the back of my truck, the tail dropped, uh, had no cap in it, I've since added a cap in, um, and the transmission fluid looked pretty dark. Um, could be it was just at 61,500 miles, could have been uh, needing serviced, uh, could be indication that there was a, um, you know, a problem, um, uh, you know, we'll find out as we get into this. Uh, also the valley here, uh, I don't know when it got pulled, but the valley of the motor has a lot of rust built up in it. And it was like that when I uh, pulled the, the, uh, the valley cover off, um, initially. So this, this motor's probably been sitting for quite a while. So I'm fully expecting you know the lifters to are going to need to are going to take a while to pump up whenever it's first fired up um so yeah but it was a uh, motor trans combination 4l80 6 liter ls i got the entire engine harness and computer uh include also got a uh, power steering pump uh out of it the alternator um complete engine harness and computer but I really don't plan to be using the power steering pump out of the unit because the car that it's going in, it won't fit. Um, I'm going to have to get a different water pump uh, that doesn't have the outlet here at the top because uh, this was made for the uh, old truck intake, which I do have in the garage. But we're going to switch over to a uh, LS6... Uh, uh, one, two, six style intake that'll have the intake, uh, the throttle body much lower. The truck throttle body is up about here. Um, we're going to need to put it about here because the car that it's going in is, um, is, is to the, the, there's just not the height available in the compartment. Um, harmonic bon balancer we're going to leave. Um, I've got a Holly kit. Um, to do the accessory mounts. I still have to buy um, the Corvette style power steering uh, pump. And I don't know if that AC compressor will be able to be mounted up here with what I got. Not too concerned about AC at this point other than it, you know, I wanted the bracket so that one day when I, when I do uh, want AC, I'll have the brackets already bought as part of a complete kit. Um, I did buy this uh, um, lift plate from uh, Dirty Dingo. Um, they actually sell them on Amazon, but they're the they're the brand. Um, the reason why I bought this plate is it is a dual LS and um, small block Chevy and a lift Ford stuff like that with some other, with the other mount. So it's a it's a multi-design mount. I'm gonna have to pull the motor out of a uh, out of a GM vehicle, uh, older GM vehicle, carbureted. So I'm gonna need to, you know, use these mounts for that. But it also will lift the uh, it also lifts the uh, LS platform just fine using these perimeter bolts. It's not a full length one like what you see some, but it held this motor just fine with the transmission. Um, so that's the plan is to separate the um, transmission from the motor. Uh, go ahead and pull off the rest of the accessories. Um, I've got a new oil pan for this from Holly. Also, uh, same reason, clearance uh, issues. The truck pans are too deep to go in the car that it's going in. Um, so we've got a Holly uh, oil pan, Holly brackets. Plan is not to reuse the uh, computer and harness that I got with it, 
but to purchase a uh, Holley Terminator X Max kit, which has control for both the engine and the electronic 4L80 transmission. Um, so we've got most of the parts, don't have the engine management yet. Um, got the oil pan, so we're going to start on that. And I'm still debating whether or not to do the cam swap uh, now. Um, just go ahead and do a, a cam swap, spring swap uh, before I do this, or should I, um, you know, since I haven't personally seen this motor run, I've only seen a video, and judging by, you know, the condition of the valley and the transmission, there's uh, the transmission fluid that did come out. Uh, it's hard to tell, you know, it was this motor as good as what it was sold to me as. Um, so I'm still debating whether or not to do a cam swap uh, before I put it in or do want to or run it uh, with the uh, truck cam, uh, make sure all the bugs are worked out and then look at doing a cam swap uh, in the car maybe a little later. Um, that would be it would be very easy to do it while it's here now. Um, like I said, I'm still thinking about that. So, you know, decisions have to be made. We'll figure it out. If you if you have any comments, experiences uh, on an LS swap where you've seen um, the valley, um, you know, pretty rusty and the cam, you know, not looking great either. So. Um, Hoping that, you know, things are, you know, good in here. We'll run it. Uh, now that I look at the cam now, it uh, is making me think that uh, probably should just go ahead and pull that um, and just go ahead and do it, and we'll just deal with it. Uh, this motor does have the uh, 317 heads on it that came with uh, most truck motors. Um, not the greatest for performance as they lower the compression down in the 9 to 1 range, but a lot to run on pump gas just fine. Been toying with the idea of maybe going to some uh, 243 heads to get a little slightly smaller combustion chamber, up the compression some. Still playing around with some of those ideas, but uh, again, if you have any comments, uh, please feel free to, you know, add them below this video. But yeah, so split time to uh, split apart this stuff, get it mounted on the engine stand, and start putting the new parts on. So one thing I am going to go ahead and do um, with the motor, uh, I'm having a little bit of trouble spinning it now. I was able to spin it a couple weeks ago. Uh, is I am going to put a little bit of um, automatic transmission fluid in the cylinders. This should, I would imagine, based on you know, the condition of some other things, maybe the cylinder walls are a little um, uh, rusted up and stuff too. So just going to put some uh, Dexron 6 transmission fluid in because transmission fluid is lubricant, but it also has detergents in it. So just going to take a little syringe here and get some in every cylinder, then put back in the um, uh, spark plugs, let it just kind of sit overnight and then after that, we will uh, try and spin it again, get the uh, uh, bolts from the uh, flywheel of the torque converter uh, removed, and then we can split the engine apart. So that's what we're going to do right now. Okay, so another update. Uh, I was having a hard time getting the motor to uh, spin. Uh, it spun uh, about a month ago. Um, and then I moved it over here, and now I'm starting to work on it. Um, so I jacked up the back. I highly recommend just having, this is actually like a Harley um, branded uh, motorcycle uh, oil drip pan. So you can, get, you can get it under some places. I had to jack up the back a little bit more and uh, under the transmission back there. And lift it up so that I could get this underneath. I'm going to come over and do the front. But as soon as I cracked open the... Uh, so I was just checking to see if there was any oil in this thing. Because uh, I did have to remove the uh, dipstick because it was all messed up. 
And, uh, you know, unfortunately, what came out was very watery looking. So, and uh, just as my uh, grandpa and my dad taught me, don't throw away good cardboard, you don't throw away good wood either because you don't know what you're going to need it for. These are just scrap pieces that from different projects. Uh, you know, I got this thing sitting on a Harbor Freight uh, uh, moving dolly. I'm actually going to go get another one so that when I split the uh, motor from the transmission here that I can uh, um, uh, wheel, you know, if I want to, so I can wheel the transmission around separately. Although I really could probably get away with one, but never. So, as you can see, that already isn't looking good. Let's, uh, and we'll dump this out and see what we got here. You guys can see that it's gonna be it's gonna be like here. Yeah, that's not good. Ugh. Pure water. Also, I forgot, I found this yesterday. So this is a uh, the spark plug out of the uh, number one, or I'm sorry, number two cylinder. Uh, when I was putting the plugs back in, I uh, one wasn't going into any hole, and I looked at it, and I was like, oh, wait. Realized somebody put one of these save-a-thread things on here, and apparently didn't install it, because I'm not seeing any RTV gasket like you're supposed to, and I'm assuming... Where this is a little bit cracked up here at the top that they didn't set it properly with the setting pin so the the hits just keep on coming with this motor okay so another update um basically i'm going to put marvel's mystery oil nh cylinder now try and uh free this up in 24 hours bought this little pump here down at the uh, advanced auto parts to help put it in so i'm going to basically put it in until it's uh uh put in enough to just sit on the rings hopefully it's just uh rusted rings to the side since the very likely since it had that much uh moisture water in the um in the oil and even though I only probably spun it maybe three, four times uh, since getting it, that stuff could have could have gotten up in and basically up into the moisture in the rings and stuff like that. So they might just be rusty. Um, so hopefully this will free it up. And if so, we'll be good. Otherwise, it's going to be a, a an unpleasant uh, addition to the project that I wasn't expecting. Hello everybody, update. So we have decided, or I have decided, hello everybody, update. So basically figured out I think what happened. Motor was sitting outside, this ga black gasket on the uh, knock sensor uh, was open. Uh, I think maybe water got around in here at one point. Filled up the case with uh, with water, this is all by the previous owner who sold it to me. Um, and that's why I'm theorizing how the water got down in the oil pan. So basically the plan is now, we're gonna disassemble the motor down to the block and analyze it, analyze what, uh, what everything looks like with the disassembly. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today and we'll go from there. So I'm uh, splitting the case right now from the uh, the motor from the trans. Just basically jacked up the supporting the trans on some 4x4s, 2x4s on a dolly. Taking a 4 pound sledge and a piece of wood and just getting some space so that I'll be able to get a pry bar in there. Unfortunately, the torque converter's got to come out with the flywheel because I got no way to spin the motor. It's basically too, uh, I can't spin the crank at all. So whatever's happening in here is not good, but
for a little bit. I can start see. I can see here daylight now. These old tire spinning. Yeah, there we go. Keep working on it. The goal is to get the uh, engine up on the engine stand over there that we reviewed earlier in this video, and then start the disassembly process. It is a hot day today, though, up in the 90s, so Lance's garage is a little hot. Okay, just like update. I actually switched the pry bars, did the right thing, dropped the tar spoon. I was able to manage to uh, split the transmission from the uh, motor. Uh, now, it's going to be a pain to get the uh, uh, bolts for the torque converter off, uh, then the flywheel, but definitely wasn't going to be able to do it before, and now, uh, now I can start working on that. And then we'll get it mounted over there on the uh, engine stand and go from there. So if this ever happens, I highly recommend one of these flat ratchet style wrenches. You're not going to be able to get it in the bottom. You're still going to have to do a lot of, it's a 15 millimeter for the torque converter flex, or the flywheel. But, um, you know, it, uh, unfortunately, usually you take them out with the, before you uh, separate the motor. But when you can't rotate the motor, this is the way you got to go. All right, torque converter's off. Now for the flywheel. Flex. So, got the uh, motor on the stand here. Works stand is working as advertised. I'm starting to uh, pull the heads here. I've already broken loose these. Uh, found out that you can just take off the. Uh, you do not need to remove the, um, uh, if you're pulling the whole head all at once, you don't need to um, remove the rocker arms. You can leave them on and just lift the whole thing up. Just use like a little bit of an extension. Um, and a, it's a 15 on the inners and the lowers, and it's a 10 millimeter on the side closer to the intake. So we're just gonna, go through now and break the tins and then just pull the whole head off here. At least I think we can take this out. We'll see how this works. So, eh, might have some issue with these center ones. Maybe we all have to pull this thing off. We'll see that. The goal is to not, but... Marvel's mystery oil. Uh, still sitting on top. So I started to turn the motor over a little bit and I started dumping out that side. That was before I put the cardboard underneath. Again, save the cardboard. Also, I'm bagging and tagging all the bolts that I'm pulling out of here. So, I have a feeling I'm going to probably have to take these uh, 
the intake or the rocker arms off now I have to look at this. I might be able to, but I'm starting to really bad. Yeah. Alright, so my theory is bumped. I don't think we can reuse these head bolts, but I'll research that. Pretty sure you never do. Usually the torque to yield and Let's see if we can get these out. Out pulling. Nope. Alright, my upper arms are going to have to get pulled. Oh, well, wait a minute, you know what? Actually, I could get these off by hand. And then, so just so I can get the heads off, because I'm not really wanting to... Uh, I can just, once I get these loose, just get them loose enough to where they pull up, and then we can take them out, and then uh, we can remove them, remove them later. If I can get this done. So I'm doubt that I'm going to reuse these. Uh, push rods, uh, but I might, I don't know, but I'm just going to label them uh, and put them in the styrofoam like this so that uh, I know which cylinders they came out of and if I do decide to reuse them, I can reuse them. Okay, so the heads are off. Um, cylinder two is looking, had a lot of junk down in the bottom, so it could be suspect. Also, uh, the styrofoam didn't quite work out. So basically just took a piece of wood and drilled um, holes, screwed up here obviously, but um, drilled holes in it. And basically this is one, three, five, seven, and two, four, six, eight. And I'll mark them down here just for, so that I remember. But, um, but yeah, so. That's one way to just steal your or uh, store your uh, push rods in case you're going to re uh, reuse them. So just uh, for clarification too, it's a uh, 2164 drill bit and it works perfectly. It's just the right size to let them sit in there but also kind of not let them wobble around and stuff. So something you can use. Let's see if I'm lucky enough so that the lifters come up with the trays or if I'm going to be fishing them out with a magnet. Yeah, I will be fishing. So just to follow up, uh, the lifters are look like trash. Uh, very corroded around them. Um, you know, definitely a problem. I put some penetrating oil in. None of them came out the trays. Now put some penetrating oil in. Probably gonna let it sit for a little while and uh, get back to this later. But uh, I mean, I can tell by looking at the cam from the top through the valley, it doesn't look in good shape. I was gonna replace it anyway. Tomorrow, my expectation is I'll be able to get this thing rotated, get the um, cam gear off, the, the harmonic mounts are front end, and then start looking, pull the oil pan, windage tray, and start looking at the uh, bottom end, which like I said, I'm pretty sure is trashed. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Hope Okay, next day um, I was able to get all the lifters out except for the lifters here in cylinder number three. They are in there good. 
with uh, the one that was left over in cylinder one. I was actually able to get a pry bar in between the cam and the lifter, get some space uh, in through the valley there, and just pry it up a little bit, and then was it, that started working it out. I've got no way to get any leverage on these. Debating whether or not to um, get a um, hydraulic lifter tool that's got the slide hammer built in. I might have to do that or go see if the uh, auto parts store rents them. Uh, I don't know if they do. Uh, I may just go down and check. I've got it tilted. I got the engine tilted at an angle here uh, on the stand so that I can get it the... Uh, Penetrating oil, you know, going down uh, from a you know vertical position and to soak in better and eat more evenly. Um, so this OEM tools kit, good kit, uh, uses a 15 inch, uh, or I'm sorry, a 19 millimeter. It's got a rod that goes in there. I thought the largest rod would be the wrong one, uh, but it is the right one and then you just kind of go turn it and then start slowly pulling it out the uh, hooks on the balancer only go one way so you can't really mess it up also one of these uh, breaker bars I got from Home Depot that's ratcheting. It works like a champ on this, so highly recommend this. To work with something like this, uh, I think I got this around. They run these on sale around the holiday times. I've seen them also at Northern Tool, similar items. Uh, but as you can see right here, it's perfect for this task. makes it get a lot quicker than if I had to just use a regular old breaker bar. Or I don't want to use an impact because using an impact on something like this, it'll chew the threads up on the thing. Uh, this is similar to like a uh, uh, what's it? Uh, like a puller, like a um, front wheel bearing sort of setup, similar thing. Uh, don't know if this is gonna get the, oh, there it goes. So the longest rod in the OEM tools kit, this is the truck set up here. So the uh, harmonic balancers on the trucks are the furthest ones out. Um, you see, came right off here. And now we'll be able to uh, put this back in the kit. Um, I think this was somewhere in the $20 to $30 range. Um, this OEM tools kit over here. Uh, and if you're going to be working on any LS's, uh, this is something you're going to need. It has different size rods for, you know, depending on which thing you're, uh, which LS you're working on. Truck is definitely the longest one. Um, and the reason why when you do it, it won't look right, but this hole here or this uh the the nut that you do is is hollow so that rod actually slides way up in there so worked great uh available on amazon for like i said 20 30 bucks i think it's closer to 30 but um and we got the balancer off and i think for there i'm going to call it a i think i'm going to call it a day to day and uh uh, I will work on pulling off the uh, oil pan, the front timing cover, um, give the lifter the rest of the night to soak with even more penetrating oil, and we'll just see how the, everything goes tomorrow. Um, okay, couldn't stay away this evening, so I decided to go ahead and pull off the timing cover. Uh, looks like the cam gear and the timing chain has been sitting next to uh, Davy Jones locker where the rest of this boat anchor was, uh, wherever the previous uh, owner stored it. So 
gonna pull apart the uh, the uh, cam sprocket there disconnect it see if we can uh, spin the cam put it back on afterwards spin the cam and see where we go taking off the uh, timing plate now bolt stripped that was my luck for today so i was checking on the last lifter this morning and it's actually was able to turn like this and now i'm just <clears throat> kind of moving it in and out and then every time it gets stuck just lightly tap it back in <clears throat> and these lifters junk anyway so they're gonna get replaced oh, almost there it is final lifters out and that was the, the insert for the lifter so all the lifters are now out of the block plan now is I had one screw last night that uh, for the uh, cam retaining cover the one over here stripped out uh so i'm gonna go see about getting a screw extractor before uh trying to drill it out um it's already got a good hole there so i should be able to use just an extraction bit hopefully uh drilling out will be the last case thing that i want to do but uh as you can see i got the cam gear off um i might try and rotate it now that we get this lifter out just to see if the cam rotates it all but um finally got the last piece out of the lifters okay so just put the not doing any major thing here but the cam does turn does have a little bit of resistance at some points but now it's starting to now that i'm moving it that freed it up so i think this should come out and it also points to the problem definitely being the crank slash piston area for where it's seized. Um, I, I'm not seeing enough on the pistons. I think it's there. I actually believe it's down the crank. But uh, after I get the cam retaining plate off uh, and get the cam out, uh, with after I get the bolt extractor, we will you know proceed and go to the bottom end of the motor take a look well first attempt not good so now i've got a piece of hardened steel in the bolt that i was going to extract and this crap is not cheap garbage garbage Hey, welcome back to the garage today um, getting ready to remove the uh, pistons uh, I'll get the cam and the uh, cam plate out last because I got a, a bolt that's going to require probably welding a nut to it to get it out one of the last cam retainer plates extractor bolt got stuck so uh, it's stuck in the bolt so drilling it doesn't seem very practical although not out of the uh, question um, but I am getting ready to do the, um, pistons and I saw this on another YouTube video. You put the head bolts back in and then put rubber bands across the bolts like this to catch, to keep the pistons from just dropping out. Um, 
Couldn't find rubber bands, so these are actually uh, hair scrunchies because that's all that was available pretty much uh, the, the two places that I looked. Um, and they're actually pretty strong, maybe stronger than rubber bands. So grab probably the colors uh, that won't most likely be used out of the kit um, ever by, uh, by my wife. So um, plan is knock these pistons out and um, see how things go. Hopefully they'll start cranking over. I'm going to go to the pistons that are uh, readily accessible first and then move on. So I've got the two, first two uh, rod caps off. Um, bearings don't look great. Um, so now this is just a 7 8 inch dowel rod. You can pick it up at your local a uh, hardware store for about four bucks or so. Got the uh, rubber bands on the other side. And then we're just going to knock just going to, oh, and there it's out. Rubber band caught it. So the internets was correct. So now we'll work on the rod. The bearing stayed on the crank. Yeah, definitely got some gunk and wear in the bearing here. It's hard to see, but it doesn't look great. This is uh, cylinder number three. So I'm going to put it again, bagging and tagging all the pieces here. Including the cylinders themselves. So that machine shop can kind of get an idea of what's going on. And we're just going to continue doing that throughout this project. So and all these rods look pretty for the bearings on the crank. Definitely are crusted over, so that was probably uh, part of the big issue. Hopefully this uh, I'll be able to start turning this thing over. I'm going to continue this procedure, working good. Again, the hair scrunchies, head bolts, rubber bands catches the, uh, um, as it catches the pistons as they drop. And then you just keep working on the, uh, everything else here. Um, the 7 8 inch, inch dowel knocks them right out. So we're just going to keep going and we'll update you at the end.
So uh, I've gotten everything out now, all the pistons out except for one and eight. And I can't get those out at the moment because the piston, uh, the rod and piston angle is such that the bottom bolt, I can't get it with a, um, a uh, square, a six point and a ratchet um, to get any leverage. And I'm worried that if I just use a standard box in or the uh, 12 point on the other end of a 7 16th box end, that it's gonna strip it out. So um, I'm gonna go figure out a solution here and then get back to this. But the method of the dowel rod, um, the rubber bands, everything worked great. I did lose, I did have one cylinder hit the floor or one piston uh, hit the floor in the method number seven when I took it out a little bit ago. But other than that, everything else worked out great. I think I kind of got, I should have had uh, maybe two bands on that one. Um, but uh, the method works good. Um, and it's just a matter of getting these last two bolts out um, on these on uh, rods uh, one and eight and then we can complete uh, that part of the removal and then move to the uh, pulling the uh, main caps and get the crank out okay update a uh, quick fix on this I loosened up the uh, just loosened all of the uh, main cap bolts and then was able to turn the crank uh, by hand so clearly the uh, uh, crank bearings are all probably the issue of why this motor stopped turning over because like I said the pistons have been coming out real easy so now I'm just going to uh, finish off uh, cylinders one and eight And all of the pistons are now out of the block. So I found the culprit. The uh, crankshaft here is all rusted. 
the rest of them look to be in pretty good shape um, but yeah that's definitely an issue um, I guess the uh, motor decided that it uh, no longer wanted to be a 364 and perhaps wants to be a 408 so anyway at least verified that um, it is that the pistons weren't seized lifters were not in great shape um, but those were all going to get replaced with LS7 lifters anyway um, so now I'm just going to pull the crank work on getting the uh, cam, sh cam retaining plate that one bolt out and then it'll be ready to go up to the shop okay so just so you know I have welded a uh, bolt on here it's about pull into a 17 millimeter onto the cam plate bolt that was stuck in and it's coming right out so that plan worked so put my new welder to some use fix the problem that was going to be really bad not a great weld job but it worked so now I can pull out the cam and we will uh, be just about done stripping down this motor. So the cam plate bolts are the same size as the cam gear bolts. Uh, just put them on just so I can put some penetrating oil onto the cam so I could spin it, get it going. It was kind of hard to move. I'm just going to work this in, let it soak a little bit uh, just because of the condition of you know everything else with the cam gear or the crank and stuff so just going to get some penetrating oil worked in there real good and then we'll pull the cam out cam shaft is out so i think we are just about done with the uh, tear down phase here a few odds and ends there's two sensors that need to come off the uh, rear of the block i think we're going to call that a uh, a day um also i just want to say that the easy turn engine stand uh, was great. It made this a lot easier job. You aren't fighting with the stand. It turns real easy. Allows you to just crank the moat over, motor over to whatever side you need to work on it. Very easy to do. Um, doesn't require hardly any effort. Um, definitely makes it an easier job. I would uh, highly recommend it. And uh, if you found this video interesting and uh, would uh, like to follow more of this build um, hit the like and subscribe button and um, look forward to getting this off to a machine shop seeing what needs to be done I'm pretty confident the block is in decent shape um, thinking like I said again 408 uh, stroker um, and uh, so unfortunately that's more money I got to throw into the build now that I wasn't planning to throw until maybe a couple years from now, but things happen and when you get lemons, make lemonade. Again, thank you and have a great day.